at multi robot funding. So, Konstantin Lakulev is our first speaker. And, uh, uh, yeah. Good morning, everybody. So my name is uh, Konstantin Yakovlev, and that's joint work with uh, Anton Andrychuk, who is also here. Uh, so a short disclaimer before I start. Although my talk is scheduled within the robotics section, actually in the paper I'm going to talk about, uh, many real-world complications have been compiled away or ignored, and actually it was recommended by the ICAPS program committee to be moved to the main track, because it's mostly the multi-agent paper, and we completely agree with this, so just don't be surprised when you like, uh, see that many real-world complications are ignored. Uh, so, okay, we're looking at the scenarios when there is a group of agents acting in the shared environment and every agent has to safely navigate to its goal. This can be either like virtual agents, real agents, mobile robots, UVs, and so on. So we consider all agents to be uh, open disks of identical radio R and the workspace is tessellated into the square grid uh, where the grid cell size equals to R and agents locations are tied to the centers of the grid cells. <coughs> so unlike many other ongoing work in grid-based uh, uh, multi-agent pathfinding, we allow our agents to traverse uh, moves into arbitrary direction as long as uh, the move is a straight line segment connected, uh, connecting the centers of distant at block grid cells. So this results in uh, what is called any angle paths and these paths are uh, known to be shorter than the paths uh, comprised of the moves when only uh, jump to the cardinal neighborhood cells are allowed, it, which is a typical assumption, as I've said. Uh, in our work, we also adopt uh, some additional move-related assumptions, like we indeed allow our agents to wait before committing to a move, and uh, we assume that uh, all agents move with the same speed, which equals 2R rank units per one time step. It's just to simplify the complication because we have like the distance traveled is equivalent to time. So it's not a restriction, we can actually manage with like any speed. And yeah, inertial effects are neglected. Uh, so the problem is basically to find a set of conflict free trajectories given a set of starting goal locations, and we're not limiting ourselves to find an optimal solutions, but obviously lower cost solutions are preferable, where the cost of the solution is the sum of the individual costs. Uh, so various uh, multi-agent planners exist nowadays. Uh, some of them are referenced on, on this slide. And um, the problem uh, with applying uh, these planners to the problem I'm talking about is that typically, they rely on the fact that uh, we can exactly identify the grid cell or grid edge where a conflict happens. So it's not a problem when uniform cost, cardinal only moves are allowed, like uh, this picture on the right. So we can always say like the exact cell and the exact time point. But when we introduce any angle moves, it happens so that conflict zone becomes somewhat ambiguous with the respect of underlying grid models. So we cannot just name a single grid cell where this conflict happens. And conflicts can now occur at any moment of continuous timeline as well. So to attack the above mentioned challenges, we suggest uh, using a decoupled approach. Namely, we rely on prioritized planning, which is a well-known concept in robotics. It's when uh, all agents are assigned unique priorities and the trajectories are planned sequentially one by one. And when we're uh, finding a trajectory for an agent, we treat all high priority agents as moving obstacles. Uh, so as we build our individual planner on top of a uh, safe interval path planning algorithm uh, which was uh, proposed here in Carnegie Mellon University by uh, the group of Maxim Lihachov, we enhance it so now it's capable of handling any angle moves and we also uh, uh, incorporate this avoid low priority start location strategy as proposed in the work by Chep and others, which was also presented on ICAPS a few years ago, we need this to guarantee the completeness of the multi-agent planner under certain conditions. So yeah, when we plug back this any angle SIP, dubbed AA SIP, into this prioritized framework, we end up with the algorithm we call AA -SIP -M, and it's complete under well-defined conditions, which often hold in practice, but obviously it's not complete in general, because prioritized uh, Planning is, uh, doesn't guarantee completeness in general. We all know this. 
So basically, uh, an angle SIP as well as a regular SIP is a heuristic search algorithm. So search in uh, state space populated by the nodes. And each node is uh, a tuple, its configuration and safe interval. That's a bit different from like static A star. So configuration is the spatial component of the node. It's just like the cell in our case. And uh, safe interval uh, is the temporal component. We need uh, intervals to take moving obstacles into account. So obviously we do not want our agent to occupy some cell configuration. At the moment of time, moving obstacle passes by and hits the agent. So what we do is we group the continuous intervals uh, when its configuration is in collision, invert them, and get the safe intervals. So how do we calculate collision intervals? Uh, well, it's, uh, in our case, we do the following thing. So we draw a circumference of radius r multiply 2 with the center in the cell. We look at the obstacles path that uh, intersect the circumference. We use uh, like conventional formulas from computational geometry to calculate the coordinates of the intersection points. And if we know the coordinates, we know the timings. And these timings form collision intervals. And safe intervals result from the inversion, as I've said. And we additionally store uh, additional informat uh, information associated with the node. Like in A star, we have G value, we have H value, we have parent. And on top of that, we also have time which is the earliest uh, possible arrival time agent can uh, come to the configuration moving out from parent. And so here's the generic code. It's uh, what you uh, would see uh, in like any sort of heuristic search algorithm. Uh, so basically the main loop is on the left. So we, uh, on each step, we choose the most promising node from the set of candidates called open and we expand it, namely we look at the neighborhood cells and we try to generate successors. It's done inside this get successor function which is on the right. So it's actually where these safe intervals are calculated. I've already told how this is done. It's where the earliest arrival times are estimated. I will talk about this shortly. And in the end of the day, get successor function returns a set of successors back to the main loop and we insert or update them in open like typical A star would do. And we continue until we uh, retrieve the node corresponding to the goal cell from the open list. So the uh, core difference between an angle SIP and regular SIP is those two lines of code highlighted in blue. So what an angle SIP does, actually after getting the regular successors, uh, an angle SIP tries to validate so-called shortcut moves. So suppose we're expanding some cell and there is a neighbor, we try to figure out if the move is possible from the parent of the cell we're expanding directly to the neighbor. And if such move is feasible, we generate the corresponding successors as well and add them to the open list. So how do we validate the shortcuts? Basically, we identify all the cells that lie on the straight light segment connected the endpoints of the move. Uh, we use this by the algorithm from computer graphics community, Wu algorithm. We modified it and enhanced it a bit so it um, uh, suits our needs. So we, in the end of the day, we get all the cells that are in contact with the agent and then we just check if they're all traversable. If they are, like on the picture on top of the slide, then the shortcut move is feasible. That's how we do this. So, okay, we know how to validate the shortcuts. We know how to calculate safe intervals. Uh, we need to know how to estimate earliest arrival time. And uh, we do this by basically uh, uh, approximating collision intervals induced by moving obstacles that interfere the any angle move we are looking at. I'll sketch the main idea briefly. So suppose there is an agent which wants to go to S prime, moving from parent S prime, and there is an obstacle on its way. So we split the obstacle movement into the uh, points in the time space called constraints, which are the tuples P time P, and the distance between two consecutive uh, constraint points doesn't exceed uh, 2R by construction. And uh, we uh, prune the constraints, constraint points which are too far away uh, in space and cannot interfere the agent. So we end up with uh, what is called relevant constraint, constraints. 
And for each such constraint, we also calculate the coordinates of the closest point. Uh, it's denoted with prime here, which lies on the agent's path. So we have a constraint point, P3, and the closest point on agent's path, P3 prime. And we can even forget now about how obstacle actually moves, because we would look only at the constraints and work with them. And basically what we want to do, we want to estimate the collision interval induced by such constraint. So, and one can show that the collision might happen only if the agent is uh, somewhere along the line segment stretching two R length units away from P prime point. And because length is equivalent to time, we can calculate the time, corresponding time interval, and which means if we start moving from parent S prime to S prime outside this interval, no collision is guaranteed to happen when obstacle reaches constraint point. And we can do this for all constraint points, but obviously we want to guarantee that there would be no collision when obstacle moves in between constraint points, right? So we uh, need to guarantee safety in the R proximity of each constraint point, and again by just using some worst case analysis and basic rules of geometry, we can infer that the conflict might happen only if an agent is four R length units away from P prime. And we can again recalculate it with respect to the uh, time time intervals get. So now we have the corresponding collision time intervals and then we can merge them and get the consistent collision interval and when we have it, it's just a matter of a couple of if-then checks to see how it fits inside the safe interval which belongs to the uh, end point of the move. It's done like uh, in, in a way original SIP would do. So we have an algorithm which is complete which and the solution cost never exceeds the cost of regular SIP solution and when we plug back it into the prioritized framework it is complete in well-defined infrastructures where well-defined infrastructure is just a special type of pathfinding instances. The formal notion is on the slide but basically it means that start and goal locations are um, chosen in such a way in the environment that any agent standing uh, on its start or go location for any amount of time wouldn't block other agents from getting to their goals. Uh, so we've uh, implemented the algorithm and evaluated it experimentally in the series of simulated tests and we compared it with other algorithms that rely on cardinal moves only, namely with regular SIP, dubbed SIP M, and also with two state-of-the-art uh, algorithms, uh, so-called conflict-based planners, CBS. It was ICBS, which uh, always uh, returns an optimal solution, and ECBS is the suboptimal version. So, uh, in the first experiment we were looking at empty grids, uh, size 64 by 64, a number of agents varied from uh, 50 to 250, We've generated 100 instances for each number of agents, and each instance was generated in such a way for it to be a well-formed infrastructure. Runtime limit was set to be five minutes. So here's the success rate, it's 100% for AACPM. No surprises here, because all instances are well-formed infrastructures, so it's, it's good. That's the most interesting chart, solution cost. As one can see, there is a notable reduction in solution cost, up to 22%. That's actually what we were looking for, right? So we can greatly reduce the solution cost by introducing any angle moves. And it looks like that uh, AACPM scales pretty well to large number of agents on empty grids. So its runtime is okay. So in, in uh, second experiment with uh, uh, there were three maps from Nathan Stewart and Collection involved. The reason why we've chosen these maps uh, was that these are the maps uh, used in the community previously by the authors of ICBS, so we just like took them. Uh, and now the number of agents arrived from 25 to 100, and each instance uh, was not guaranteed to be a well-formed infrastructure. A runtime limit was set to be five minutes again. So here is the success rate. So now it's not 100%, unfortunately, but still it's pretty high. It's 97% for uh, an angle SIP. And again, the cost reduction is notable. Up to, we get the solutions which are up to 21% better. And again, it looks like it scales pretty well. 
But now the run times are obviously higher than on empty grids uh, because of the uh, lo more large search space. So that concludes my talk. That's basically it. The main point is that we definitely need to look at those any angle moves and any angle paths when we're looking for uh, solving grid-based multi-agent pathfinding problems because although it can be tricky, it really pays off. We get much better solutions. Uh, so we have uh, we uh, we plan to continue uh, like enhancing the algorithm. And if any one if anybody wants to take part in it, uh, you're welcome. Let's collaborate, and do it together. And so here is like the demo. So they all follow any angle path on on a grid. Uh, that's my talk. Sure. I'll let you have a few. You got time? I, 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 that's basically. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. So I guess I will at least pseudo challenge your earlier statement that the existing map algorithms couldn't deal with any angle planning. So thinking, of, so for, first off, you're at, there's the minor point that the priority planner does work awfully well. So if you don't care about guarantees and you want something that's easy to implement, that's a good choice. If you want the guarantees, it, look, it seems like both CPS and MSTAR ought to work just fine. The trick being, on the C, especially CPS should be really easy for you to slap in. The only difference is you'll basically just be using edge constraints where you're banning a given edge yeah. with a given start time. It's not going to be nearly as efficient Absolutely. as yeah. CPS normally would be, but I, I can't say how it will stack up with the priority plan. Yeah, I mean, like, that absolutely, like, the branching factor of CBS on, mul that's, that's what we're, like, uh, we're talking about with uh, Thane, uh, who is also looking in this, like, multi-agent and angle planning. Uh, his talk was a couple of days ago. So we definitely can use CBS and just uh, prevent it from moving, like, the same age. But the thing is that in any angle planning, you have, like, many, many edges which doesn't look form which are not formally the same so i mean like we cannot abandon them and it will keep trying to move to these nearby edges yep. but it, it won't eliminate the conflict the reason why cbs is uh, pretty efficient then in cardinal based move when cardinal only move are allowed it i mean like we can say don't be here at this moment of time and we guarantee that this conflict disappears but not in any angle setting. But I, I agree that's, that's absolutely true and correct. We can go and implement conflict-based search in, in a straightforward way, just uh, abandoning, uh, just prohibiting, taking the edges which we choose, which we are on a conflict. Right. Actually, actually, thinking about it a bit further, the enhanced CBS, the suboptimal version, is effectively priority planning if you give it a high enough suboptimality value. Yeah, I mean, like, that's... that's so that, that means that you should probably be able to actually... You should be able to set it up so that you're almost running priority planner with just CBS as a fallback Well, I, your priority is wrong. Yeah, uh, yeah, correct, correct. I mean, like, the, the point is that uh, we... Like, the, the main, like, motivation was that uh, we definitely need to allow any angle moves. Mm -hmm. Wh whatever, uh, I mean, like whatever framework you choose, like be it CBS or prioritized planning or prioritized planning with random restarts so or like whatsoever. So I agree with this and uh, it actually pays off because like we get in the solutions uh, of much lower cost. So we in future, like with uh, planning uh, to implement actually CBS with uh, this sort of constraint just to see how how uh, it would work. I, in, in my opinion, it would just fail. I mean, like, it uh, won't solve any uh, problem in five minute time cap uh, because, I mean, like, the branching factor is enormous. Yeah, yeah. We need to move on to the next speaker. So. Oh, sorry. That's okay.